<laughs> Dummy hard then getting the fourth match underway, the third replay, and the changes we were speculating from Dublin are materializing. Paul Curran here is on the 40. Tommy Carr still right half back. Drilling this one forward towards Charlie Redmond, who's moving it to the centre. That's closed down, however, by Liam Harnan. Paul Clark is playing at full forward. It's uh, Mick Galvin top of the left. Declan Sheehan top of the right. And into midfield has come Jack Sheedy. Meanwhile, it's David Beggy looking for score number one for the afternoon. Superbly closed down by the very mobile Tommy Carr. And it's gone for the game's first 45 after 33 seconds. And Liam Hayes has required attention. And he's going off the field momentarily. Sean Boylan was in there to nurse him. Player who had to leave the field with a dead leg. And now it seems to be uh, a head injury. Stafford, the 45 free taker, has pointed. A great score by Stafford. That, that, that could help me now. It will really settle him. Colm O'Rourke, deep in midfield. To Stafford, who's come very deep. A good 45 metres out. Hagen trying to get in a telling challenge. And O'Rourke was hit mighty hard that time by Keith Parr, I think. Here he was in there too. Yeah, Colm O'Rourke could be in trouble there now. He got a terrible bang. And Hayes is still on the sideline. They're still treating him on the far side. He's up and he's coming back on again. Yeah, Colm is going to be a terrible loss to me because, as I said, in all, his, all the games to date, he has been the inspirational man on the pitch for me. He's been their leader throughout. But then again, Mead may raise their game now. You know, there you are, and what a pint by Stafford. So two points for Stafford, one from a free, one from a 45. Charlie Redmond. Played forward. That's Keith Barr. It's the first time, really, that Keith Barr has attacked in any of the four matches. He's been back-minding Colm O'Rourke in all the uh, games so far. Sheehan finds the target. The first Dublin point. And I think it's interesting that Meath have not made a change yet and are playing with 14 men, obviously in the hope that Colm O'Rourke could come back into the fray. Kicking towards Gillick. Driven deep towards Bernard Flynn, but there was a foul on Gillick after he played that ball away, and so it's going to be a free from where the ball lands, which is just around 22 metres out. Has always been marked by Keith Barr. Stafford has had 100% accuracy rate so far, and he maintains that. His third point. Yeah, so Stafford, Stafford is on his game today with his frees. The last day he missed quite a lot of them, and if he continues to pop them over, well, Meade could... Could have a big bearing in at the end in this game. Bernard Flynn trying to get onto this one ahead of Deegan. Deegan is fouling. And there's a penalty of uh, several metres against Dublin for protesting that decision. It can't be a, a penalty of 13 metres as is allowed. Yeah, Mead are looking that little bit sharper at the moment. They're, they're first the ball and they're cre creating a lot of problems there for doubling around the, uh, the defence. It's a side of great character, this Meath team, and Stafford taps it over neatly. Point number four, and he opens up a two-point gap once more. Colm Coyle letting that one there. Curran. Trying to wrestle it away somehow from the attentions of Colm Coyle. Once again, the game being played at a ferocious pace, great intensity. Yes, but no set pattern coming out of it as of yet. Mead seem to be winning more possession around the middle of the field at the moment, so... Well, just in case you've come in to join us late, 21 minutes gone. All the points on the board so far have come from placed balls from Fries, and it's a meter lead, 4-2. Declan Sheehan lining this one up with the left boot, and he's cut it back to a one-point differential with his second-pointed free. It was Niall Guyton who'd made the run through the centre. It was covered expertly, however, by Colm Coyle. He's given it away to Keith Barr. Curran took up a very good position. Nobody went across to cover him, and that is the first point from play. It's finally taken 22 minutes to produce, 
and Paul Curran, a player of great skill and talent, is the one who scored it. Yeah, he's having a very good game for Dublin at the moment, Paul Curran. He's playing exceptionally well. He's here, there and everywhere. He's back in defence and he's up, up front as well. That was a great point from the left side here from Paul Curran. Going to pick out uh, Gillick, stopped instead by Jack Sheedy. On to Guidon. Gillick trying to get back goal side. Galvin, oh, there was a high elbow from Coyle, and the referee out with a notebook again against Colum Coyle. Yes, that was a straight arm tackle, all right, but as in fairness to Coyle, I don't believe it was intentional. He was more protecting himself more than anything. So that's the position then, about 24 metres out, and a chance now for Charlie Redmond to put Dublin in front. Dublin lead for the first time in this match. Just over 28 minutes gone, and Charlie Redmond's second pointed free has done the trick. They lead by five points to four. Curran, one of the stars so far for Dublin. Just as we say it, he misdirects his pass downfield. Declan Sheehan trying to keep the ball in play. And it's Guiden racing through. And he's put it over the bar. A second point from play in the match. Bang on cue. And Guiden is the scorer from Rahini. Two between them again. Shady trying to fist it down. Gillick. For a Meath team that's lost the initiative in the last few minutes. And the lead. Hayes against Bielan. Trading the pass inside to Bernard Flynn. Sells a beautiful dummy. And from 20 metres out, he's kicked it over the bar. Meade's first point from play and Bernard Flynn's first score of the afternoon. Not too much space available up on Hill 16. Whether it's Sunday or Saturday, they come to see a match which has always great drawing ability between Meath and Dublin. Tough and tight as it has been all through this series. It's continued in this match. Mead made a good promising start. Dublin came back, responded well. Charlie Redmond kicked three points in all, all of them from freeze. Like we didn't have too many points from play, just uh, three in all in the match. And so at half time, it's Dublin who go in as leaders by seven points to five. So Tommy Hard gets the second half underway, seven points to five. Dublin, the leaders, and Jerry McEntee straight away trying to redress that situation. Stafford kicking it invitingly across towards Bernard Flynn. Looking for another point, and he's put one over. Point between the teams. Bernard Flynn's second score. Yeah, that was wonderful vision on, on Stafford's part there. He spotted Flynn away on the far side. He was completely and totally free. And it was amazed that Deegan wasn't with him. But it's still, it was great finish for uh, Flynn again. Colm O'Rourke is now playing in the full forward line as has been for about the last 10 minutes of the first half. Foley for a mid side who trailed by a point, 7-6. All the options close down for Martin O'Connell and he's gifted it to Mick Galvin. And off the post it comes, and over the bar. That a was mistake a by O'Connell. That was a terrible mistake by Martin O'Connell. I think it's going to be a bit of an uphill battle for me at the moment. Wind, it seems, supporting Keith Barr. A really good ball. McLean's coming to try and collect. He's left it there. Charlie Redmond has put it over. This is a very good spell for Dublin. They're looking very sharp. They've responded well to that early meet point scored by Bernard Flynn. They've come back strongly and opened up a three-point gap. But remember, two weeks ago, they led by five. Declan Sheehan. They're on the move again. Into Clark, trying to take Mick Lyons out of position. Lyons has been by far the more dominant player so far. That's not a bad one. Played back in well and put over the bar by Guyton. His second point, taking the pass from Mick Galvin after it had all been set up by Paul Clark. Meanwhile, there's a Dublin player down injured on the 65-metre line. Hagen 
into space. Clark trying to get a touch onto that one. Declan Sheehan coming right across the face of the goal. Challenged by Harnan. Robbie O'Malley there as well. Players calling for it inside. One of them was Mick Galvin. Missed. Finally, it reaches uh, Paul Curran. But such a very good first half. Charlie Redmond. And what's a very tense moment. And finally, it's dispatched over the crossbar. Tellingly by Charlie Redmond for his fifth point of the game. And the last two have been from play. But Dublin aren't playing so well at the moment. I don't think it will make any big difference as of now. Galvin against a depleted Meath team. Harnan against Charlie Redmond. It's run on here beautifully for Curran. Can he put it away? He's put it over the bar. Paul Curran had a goal opening. He was content with the point. Deep into space. Colm O'Rourke there with Mick Kennedy. O'Rourke manages to hold on. And Colm O'Rourke engineers the free kick for Meath. And Brian Stafford is the one who's going to kick it. Well, on a warm afternoon, is this to be the conclusion of the series? Plenty of time still remaining for Meath, but Dublin looking really good. And we have to pay tribute to two fine teams, amateur players all, who've given everything they've got throughout the month of June, now into July. And that's produced a point for Brian Stafford, his first point of the second half. Five points in all, they've all come from place balls. So it's back to a five-point difference. McEntee and Keith Barr reaches Gillick. Jack Sheedy trying to limit his space. Colomora trying to get away from Mick Kennedy into the clear. Meet a need of a goal, and they've got it! It's Brian Stafford who's brought them back from the edge yet again. No sooner, no sooner said than done. I said that me that needed a goal to get back into the game. And Colm O'Rourke in fairness spotted, uh, spotted a Stafford there and he let the ball in. O'Rourke could have gone himself but the experienced player that he is, he let it across to Stafford who finished very well. Well you'd read the script Mick and uh, likewise Brian Stafford the cameo roll somehow drove it in defiantly past John O'Leary. There are now just two points between the teams. He's made a valued contribution. O'Connell is beaten for it by Sheehan. McLyons is coming out, trying to go around him as Declan Sheehan. Lovely ball across. And finally it's put over the bar. A nice point by Mick Galvin. A rapid response then by the Oliver Plunkett's player. But what a great pass that was across that time by Declan Sheehan. Kennedy will, Kennedy will kick it. Overall, though, the spread of scores from Meath's point of view has been very disappointing. They've been highly dependent upon Brian Stafford, and right now they watch as Niall Guiden tries to go and secure victory for Dublin oh, yeah. at the fourth attempt, his third point, same as the last day. A really good run forward. They've responded to the goal now magnificently by coming back and kicking a couple of really good points. Coyle kicking in. Brilliantly gathered by Colm O'Rourke. Restrained by Mick Kennedy. Free dispatched over towards Matty McCabe. And that's one they need and get from McCabe, the substitute. That's right, Colm O'Rourke created that score again. He spotted Matty McCabe and let the ball over quickly. And very good finishing by McCabe. He's only been on the losing team on four occasions. Right now, Curran trying to make sure it's a fifth, and it's Declan Sheehan, and it's a penalty. Declan Sheehan has not heard the whistle, but it's a penalty. Yes, unquestionably, it is a penalty. Mickey McQuillan in goal. He's denied Dublin in the past. Can he now keep Meath in this championship match? Remember the scoreline. Meath 1-8, Dublin 14 points. Translated into points, that's 14-11. It's a goal! No, it's outside! It's outside, he's missed it! Keith Barr has missed the penalty. Mead stay in the tie. Only three between them, and Keith Barr had the chance to put this beyond the Mead men's reach. Away to McQuillan's right-hand side. Goalkeeper got down well, and it just somehow managed to sneak outside the post. Only three the margin. They need another few points. Guiden.
and he's found the range. Yes, unquestionably, Guinan is the best forward on the field today, and he's got four great points in play. Mead needing a goal to carry the match into extra time yet again. Beggy. It's still possible. Foley. Into Gillick. A lot of poor marking by Dublin. And it's Tommy Downer scouting it right through the heart to Foley. And the championship what a time well that was unbelievable you know the dub the meat forwards just walked through the dublin defense uh, dublin committed themselves completely and totally to attack their midfielders and their half backs had gone forward when they should have been defending closely but how there here it is you know in fairness to me they walked that score very well and they're well deserving it was on the cards all the time it was a brilliant goal foley the goal scorer superbly worked now they're going for a win which we scarcely thought they were going to have 10 minutes ago we had them completely written off well, they have the chance and the right man have it now Flynn kicking and they're in front Reed lead in this amazing game we're into injury time David Beggy's first score what an incredible game it's been Dublin have been lording it Mead were playing second fiddle David Beggy with the fans on their feet checking their watches. It's now all at the discretion of referee Tommy Howard. He signals a Dublin free kick. So now the pressure is on the dubs who simply weren't able to put me the way at any stage. Yeah, I was saying it all through that Dublin just weren't putting me the way in. It's amazing. But in fairness to me, they worked that. That was a great goal, one of the best goals of the championship so far. But still, Dublin have got a chance to come back into the game again. Jack Sheedy, a newcomer to the championship in his fourth championship match. Nearly a minute of injury time has been played. He's kicked it to the left and it's gone wide. It was an ambitious kick. Our Dublin now to go out of the championship. We were writing the Mead obituary up here. We obviously hadn't the faith that the players had in their own ability. We should have known because we've seen them ever since 1986 combined superbly. You can't keep a good Meath team down. McQuillan. They've won it. Meath have won by a point. It's an amazing win. A late, late goal by Kevin Foley. A winning point by David Beggy. It's taken four games, nearly five and three quarter hours of wholly committed action to finally resolve a match that grabbed the nation's attention. It was sometimes excellent, occasionally infuriating, but always absorbing. And it ended here at Croke Park in front of a dumbfounded and stunned Dublin set of fans on Hill 16 who make their way off with me, the winners, by just a point. An amazing game. Dublin must have had at least 60% of the play in the second half and Mead turned it around. You know, they had the experience and they had the skill and the finish to walk two great goals. And in fairness, they were two of the best goals that I've seen in the championship this year. Overall, Dublin will be very, very disappointed because it's a game they unquestionably should have won, but we must hand it to Mead. They're great fighters and they're going to be very hard to beat in the championship. Well, they will now be installed as favourites, of course, to take the title, but there's a long way to go. Kieran Duff congratulating Martin O'Connell. Well, there's still a look of disbelief in his face. And Colm O'Rourke and Jerry McEntee, players who helped to make it happen. Our first time to show you a championship match live on a Saturday afternoon. What a finish, what a match. And Brian Stafford, the scorer of a goal and six points. Dublin missed the penalty, of course, by Keith Barr. That was a critical miss. But what a set of matches we've had. Four terrific and memorable games. Well, if Mead go on and progress and overcome fatigue, mental and physical, there's still five games to go to win in All-Ireland. But it finished on this Saturday afternoon in the sunshine of Croke Park with Mead still in the championship. The winners by a point. Final score, Mead's 2-10. That's 16 points. Dublin, 15. Meet go on, Dublin are out.